Hello, Brother Sewing Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf, Brother Brand Ambassador, and welcome to Major Snowy, Michigan. <laughs> In fact, I think it's going all the way across the United States. But today we have got a fabulous show for you. I told you, mark your calendar. Guess what? National Embroidery Month is kicking off, and we have got some of your favorite brother educators joining to give you some tips for the best embroidery. Well, organizing, little tips here. You're going to love this. See you in a minute. All right, so hopefully you have your morning coffee, especially if you're on the West Coast, because you're gonna need a notepad and a pen to take all these notes. And don't worry, you can come back and watch it again later. So we are live streaming on Brother Sewing. YouTube and Facebook pages will be able to see your comments, questions. In the meantime, say hi, say where you're from. I see our YouTube crew grow, <laughs> growing, <laughs> rolling in. Now let's welcome our educators. We have got Jane, Kathy, hi. Sarah, and Jerry. Hello, hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. Oh, I'm so excited. This almost reminds me of like what we do at the end of the year. But guess what? <laughs> We're doing it once a month now, and I'm so excited. And I know the brother fans are too. I saw some of the comments when I said, mark your calendar. <laughs> <laughs> to have all of you here is so fun. Nice. We love it. We love it. All right. So your rooms look fabulous, by the way. And you all love to embroider, but you know, here's the cool part. You have advanced and you have beginner. And I love Sarah, cause she said, you know what? I'm kind of new to this. So I think I'm gonna be able to add a lot too. So no matter if you're a beginner or advanced, I think you're gonna get a lot of tips here. And they're here to take your questions too, assuming I see them. <laughs> so I will have to say, Jerry, why don't we kick off with you? Because last month we focused on organizing and now right. we're going to embroidery. So you kind of have tips for both. Boy, do I ever. Um, first off, I have my coffee, so woo -woo, So we're ready to go. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. I'm Jerry Granada. I am a brother educator. I'm from Palm Springs, California, and we don't have snow. We never have snow. I know. Shut up, Jerry. Uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> I just thought, um, like Angela said, and, and I want to restress, if you do not have a pad of paper and a pencil or pen, grab one now. There is a wealth of information uh, on this show today. I mean, there's going to be so many amazing tips and tricks, uh, like we said, from advanced to beginner. Um, and again, like Angela said, kicking off last month's organizational uh, tips, I want to start with um, organizing for embroidery, since we're talking about embroidery. And this goes for beginners all the way to advanced. So what I want to start with is um, a scenario, and this has happened to me as well. So the scenario is you've just jumped into the world of embroidery. You ordered your machine. It may be a week, two weeks. You might be able to pick, up, pick it up today. But what's going to happen is you're so excited and you can't wait to jump in. So if you have ordered your machine and it hasn't going to come in for a while, you're going to sit on your computer and you're going to start going through all of these websites that your friends have told you about and recommended or ones that you have seen and you just can't wait to start downloading. So you're going to jump onto these design sites and you're going to start downloading and you're going to have, um, you know, this designer has having, ooh, look, they have a 50% off all their design packs. And this designer has all these design packs. And look at this website has all these free designs. And, you know, some of these design packs can have 40, 50 designs in them. So before you know it, within a matter of minutes, you have 100 to 200 designs. The problem is most people don't know where they went on their computer. They don't know what to do with them. They're going to have hundreds of designs. You don't even know what you have anymore. So and this has happened to me. So I'm guilty as well. So what I suggest, and again, this is my opinion only. This is what I do. Um, go on your computer before you start downloading and doing anything is set up a filing system. So set up a main file that says, mine says Jerry's Embroidery Designs. That's just my main file that I see on my desktop. Once I open that, I create subcategories of designers. So you have designers, you know, you have people designing, you have companies that have designs. Then I create those sub files of all the different companies. Then when I open that, I create subfiles of cats, dogs, flowers, 
trees, tractors, whatever it is. And my habit is when I grab a design, I immediately go to my files and I download it to that particular subfile. That way everything is organized. I know what I have. That way if I'm looking for a flower, I can just go to my designers, go through my subcategory of flowers, and I know exactly where to go and I know exactly what I have. Um, now, what can you download to? Well, of course you can download to your computer, but what happens? Computers crash, right? All of a sudden you've lost all your designs. Now they may or may not be recoverable. You are crying, to quote Tom Hanks, there's no crying in baseball. We're not gonna have any crying in embroidery. So what I suggest is you go and you grab one of these very inexpensive little external hard drives. Now you can take, of course you can keep them on your computer, but I very highly suggest that you download all of your designs to an external hard drive. That way if your computer crashes, all you have to do is plug this into your next computer, got all your designs back. Now this is, as you can see, this is a little USB. So it just goes right into your USB. These are very inexpensive, by the way. You can get them very inexpensive. Now, of course, Jerry in his OCD world takes things one step farther and I download everything to a flash drive. So I am triple covered. Um, you can also put all your designs in the cloud as well. Um, if you don't know what that is, ask your five-year-old grandchild. They'll tell you <laughs> all about it. So go ahead and, if you wish, go to a flash drive. Um, now, as a little sidebar, if you're going to download to a flash drive, make sure that this is not the flash drive you're going to plug into your machine. Because you could have hundreds of designs on this, and let's give our machines a fighting chance, okay? Your machine is going to have to go through 200 designs on this flash drive, and it could take forever to do that. Um, so just make sure this is just for downloading only. Now, if you want to grab a design off this, plug this into your computer, and then you can locate whatever you want and just grab it. I suggest also, when you are using a flash drive, um, keep one that's dedicated to your machine um, for when you are downloading designs. That way, you're only downloading a couple of them, that, the ones that you're really going to use and you're really going to love. Those are the ones that can go into your machine. So your machine only has to look through five or six designs. So hopefully that makes sense. Now there's, you know, flash drives come in all different kinds. Of, I mean, this is a brother one that we got years ago. It's got oh, little, I remember isn't that, cute? that one. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. It. Aren't those cute? <laughs> um, you know, and there's there's other manufacturers that create them as well. This is another popular design. Again, this plugs right into your machine. So if you don't like the generic uh, flash drives, then you can get something fancy. I mean, there's there's flash drives in all sorts of shapes and colors and designs. So um, go ahead and find one that you like and use that. But again, my recommendation is when you're going to use a flash drive, um, go ahead and just download just a couple of designs that you need on a flash drive uh, and then plug it in. And another kind of a sidebar is I don't plug my USB directly into my machine. I have a USB extender. So I just plug my extender into my machine and I plug my flash drive into the extender. They're, again, very inexpensive. You can get them at the big box stores. You can get them online. Um, but mine has three USB ports. So I plug into that. That way I'm not, especially if I'm doing a lot of, of change outs, um, I'm not plugging and replugging into that same USB port on my machine. It'll, it's usually going to be fine. But I, again, I just like to give my machine a fighting chance. Um, those can loosen up over the years. So I just use an ex, uh, USB extender and plug my flash drive into that. That way I only plug the extender into the machine. That so that's, is, Jerry, by the way, that is a great, great tip. Because years ago, I made the little mistake. I shoved something in. Messed up something on my machine. We'll just leave it at that. It was error on my fault, not the machine. But I never thought of using one of those extenders. Plus, you can have more than one on there. That would be great. Right. Yeah. Again, you can download several. You could put several flash drives on there and just kind of go in between all your flash drives. And that way, your your machine. You know, I've heard of the USB ports loosening up over the years. And so let's let's just not do that. All right. Let's just eliminate that right off the bat. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> So uh, another tip I'd like to, to do is, um, again, keeping in the organizational is, you know, what happens is we start uh, collecting all these stabilizers, right? We have three types of stabilizers, and I'm sure somebody else is going to cover that, so I'm not going to go into it. But there's three basic types of, of uh, stabilizers, water-soluble, cutaway, and tearaway. Um, as we go through our embroidery journey, we'll call it, um, we start collecting right? We collect thread, we collect stabilizers, we collect hoops. And 
I want to show you, uh, I'm going to change out my camera because I'm going to show you my sewing room. And I'm just going to change out. Now, on the left side, on my door is where I keep all of my stabilizer. Now, this is this is like old school, right? And I love doing just basic stuff. And this is something you can get, again, in a big box store, off the internet. They're very inexpensive. Um, and I love it because I can store my rolls there. They're off the floor. They're out of the way. I know exactly what I have. You can see that they're um, organized by color or type. Uh, and I use my label maker to label what they are. So that way I, ha I know exactly what it is. And again, it's over the door. You don't have to install anything. Um, just fits right over the door. My door shuts perfect and it works great. You can also use like a shoe rack from one of the, you know, a store or off uh, online. Um, a shoe rack will work really well if you have the room on your floor. I have a very small sewing room, so I need to get things off the floor. So for me, this works great. Um, also, on the right-hand side, this is my thread, organiz thread organizer. Um, a lot of you have behind your door that little three and a half, four-inch space, and it just kills you because you don't know what to do with it. You, it's just a big <laughs> blank wall. What do I do with that? I, I want to put something there. Most of us put a quilt or something there. But again, I'm in a very small sewing environment. So what I did, and, and I can't take credit for this. I saw this online. Um, of course, on Pinterest, where we spend another three hours. But I thought it was such a great idea. So I created my own. Now, this is this is something I constructed. And I just want to say, folks, I am not a major constructive person. I am not a project manager for construction site. Um, I, I love using power tools, but I'm not a pro at it. This is very basic construction. If you don't like doing this, have someone in your family, I'm sure, who can do this very easily. But trust me, this was very basic construction. So the frame on the outside is a big, giant rectangle. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to scroll down here, just pan down my entire floor. And as you can see, I have left space for the big, the big spools and the smaller spools. Now, again, you can organize your shelves however you want. Some people only use the big, large spools. Some people only use the small spools. So you can organize your shelving however you want. So the outside, I'm going to tell you right now, this was 80 inches high by 38 inches wide, and it's three and a half inches deep. Now, again, remember Angela said you're going to be able to rewatch this, so you don't <laughs> have to You say, Jerry, what are those dimensions again? You can rewatch it. So eight inches high, 38 inches wide, three and a half inches deep. Now the frame, uh, what did I use for that? I used one by fours. Uh, again, not too heavy. I didn't want something that was going to weigh 300 pounds. Um, and the shelves are like half by fours. Um, so again, you can organize them. And I just screwed them into the sides, covered the holes with uh, some spackle, sanded it down and painted it. So again, just nothing complicated here. So don't be afraid. Um, also, some of the big box uh, home improvement stores will cut your lumber to the dimensions that you want. So if you want to go and measure everything out and then go to one of these stores, have them cut the wood for you, then all you have to do is come home and construct it. And again, it's just very easy construction. Now, how did I attach it to the wall? I used some scrap plywood that I had and I cut out just very small little squares, um, attached them to the back of each of the four corners and then drove a screw through that plywood into my studs. Now, I very highly suggest, uh, yes, thread may not seem like it weighs a lot, but when you have hundreds of spools like I do, it can weigh a lot. So please, um, as, a, as a matter of safety, make sure that you're screwing into a stud and don't use those wall anchors. They're just not strong enough. So just find the stud and drill, drill right in there and off you go. Um, so those are my kind of, some of my organizational tips. Um, so what does everyone think? I, how do, how do very we... nice. Thank watching... you, Jerry. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm watching all the comments. Are you organized by type of thread or color <laughs> or both or size? <laughs> I know it's bad. It's bad. My OCD kicks in and it's, it's by color. First off, it's by manufacturer. It's just like my embroidery files. So, <laughs> you know, the top half is one manufacturer. Then I go into another manufacturer. Then I go into my metallics and then I go into... But it's not because I'm OCD. It's because I'm the kind of person that I, I when I want something, I want it. I don't want to have to go <laughs> look for it. And, um, you know, like I'm very organized. I mean, if you look at my sewing room, you could probably I'm going to switch my camera back because I'll give you another tip here. Um, but 
a lot of people will ask me, what is your favorite notion? And I will say my label maker. That is my favorite. No, no, this is by brother. This is a brother P touch. So, um, the, again, these are very inexpensive. You can get these at big box stores online. Um, as you can see, like off to my left here, everything is labeled. Off to my right, everything is labeled. And, um, you know, it's it's just I want it when I want it. Another tip that I have is when you have all your flash drives, you're going to start collecting all these flash drives. Again, went to the store. This is a box that holds all of those little cars, right? So I use no, this to organize fishing lures, all. Fishing lures. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, fishing lure, same thing. Um, also, I have one that says empty. Again, my label maker. That way I know exactly what I have and what I can use. Um, because again, you're going to start collecting flash drives and you're not going to have any idea what is on your flash drive. So if we go back to my brother one, this one says uh, Disney and quilt miscellaneous. Oh so so it's labeled so that I know exactly what's on that flash drive. Because again, you're going to start collecting flash drives and you're going to go, I have no clue what's on any of these. <laughs> so start labeling them and just kind of get your, I know organization, organization or organizational things strikes fear in, in the hearts of people. But in this case, it's really, really important to get out of your uh, disorganized box, so to speak, and, and really start getting organized. Because then, like I said, you're going to start collecting all these designs and you're not going to have a clue what you have or where they are. Hey, so Jerry, those are my tips. On your, on your thread, those are awesome tips, by the way. I mean, Thank like, you. I would you come to my studio? But you might need to be here for like a month. To get <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should Come see on. my closet. I just redid my closet my, and it's like all like very organized now. But, you know, again, I like I get it. There's some people that like to just throw stuff around and that, <laughs> that helps them be creative. That doesn't work for me. But, you know, I love you got to do what you got to do. I to add to Jerry's to add to Jerry's idea. You can get these little um, they go on keys so that you can label those with the P touch of what's on the oh. USB and attach it to it. And they're wow. color coded too. You can get them different colors. That's very cool. Hey Jerry, on your on your shelf, one quick question. Yep. Two quick things. Uh, do you do you just have the thread sitting on there, or do you? Um, how do you have that? It yeah, just it's just sitting on there. Again, you can customize this however you want. If you want it so that there's little like wooden dowels on there, and maybe you want the shelves to be sort of diagonal. Um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily ver uh, vertical, but diagonal so that you could put wooden dowels on there by all means. Again, change this up however you want. Um, mine are just sitting right on there so I can just grab them. Also, I'm in Palm Springs, California, which is a desert area. So it's very dusty here all the time. We have to dust every day. And so what I have, it's kind of hard to see. Maybe you can see the glare on it a little bit. But I have a sheet of vinyl over the top of it that I have Velcroed to the top. And that covers all of my threads, so I don't have any dust. There's also Velcro that I attach to the sides and the bottom. So it's pretty much encased, uh, so I don't have any kind of dust issues on my thread at all. Very, very good tip. And lastly, someone just asked one more time, what was that name of that thing <laughs> that you have with your um, stabilizer? Was there a specific name, or is it for something for shoes? It's yeah, it's mostly for shoes, but you know, as we do, we go to these stores and we go into these aisles that we wouldn't think we would normally go down, and all of a sudden, poof, we have something that we could use for storage. Um, so I can give you a hint it's in the aisle with the laundry. There, <laughs> usually, yes. that's where it is laundry yes. and organizing. So, yeah, awesome. <laughs> great, great <laughs> tips. I see Shirley just said uh, that's the next thing on her list is to start <laughs> labeling. You know, that labeling on USB. Um, Barbara was talking about it a few uh, shows ago. You both are talking about that. I think that would be the biggest time saver ever. That's my goal for 2022 is to get my embroidery designs organized. So, Well, you saw the box that I had. I have probably 40, 50 different flash drives. Imagine those all just shoved in a drawer and I'm going to go look for one particular design. Oh, goodness. <laughs> it's good. I'm... I'll spend hours. I'll be all upset. It'll be a nightmare. <laughs> that, that's that's kind of me. I'm... That's I me. need to start labeling mine. <laughs> Kathy, you and I will compare notes at the end of the year. Exactly. How many did you get? <laughs> okay. So, Jane, you were showing that tip there. You have some more tips for us, too, though. Yes, I do. Um, okay. So, what I'd like to share with you is some um, tools. So, first of all, this is a really handy ruler. Okay. So, it's numbered. 
going outside from the center out on each side and it has holes in the center so that it you would want like say if i wanted to put a design on a pocket i wanted to center it then i would use the markings on each side of the pocket and know where the center is if that makes sense so these are really handy the other thing uh, and then you can uh if you are lucky enough to have a machine that has a positioning uh snowman sticker on uh use your snowman sticker for positioning that's helpful as well so you can use this the ruler to find your center and then use the sticker to place underneath there that's very nice. Nice. Wait, wait, that's a great idea. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Very good. And then um, use try to use the size hoop that is best for the project, like this little uh, embroidery down here. Okay, this little ice spice that I'm making for my uh, grandbaby, but I wanted to put um, her initial in the quilt. So try to go to the size that best fits the project because if you have all this loose fabric here on the outside, you're gonna get um, more um, wrinkles. <laughs> all right, so another is to tighten. Some people um, don't realize that this actually will turn around so that you can use it as a screwdriver this way you can use it this way but also there's a third way so then it's inside and you bring it in and it hooks into that screw it locks right there so it makes it easier to tighten and loosen your um your hoop try not to over tighten but that's very helpful to get to the correct tightness that you'd want you know Jean, when i first came out with that it was like uh nobody could understand how to use that i think it's the best thing ever and if i lose it i get in really i get very upset yeah <laughs> it's a great tool and um one of the other things that brother does is there's these notches on your um hoop so what if you go this way and this way bullseyes in the second in the center right so you can center your project that way which is helpful and another thing let's see ruler i wrote down a bunch of things that i wanted to <laughs> mention um if your fabric is kind of thin and flimsy i like to starch it heavily um, even if it's this little um, blanket that I'm making, I like to starch it and then and I'll have a larger piece of fabric, starch the whole thing, it's nice and stiff, and then I can even use a topper on that. So if your fabric um, is maybe a woven fabric, then you'll want to use the topper. Sometimes you, you can use a topper, um, and what I mean by a topper, there's a... Um, a, a, um, a film, a material like water. that's water soluble or you can iron it off. And so if by putting that on, like if it's a, a, um, a fleece or something like that, it keeps the embroidery stitches on top of that fabric. So you'll wanna use a topper. Um, another hint is, I don't know if you can tell, but if you use your pinking shears, so I have embroidered on this, on the fabric, and I'm gonna, and it's fused onto my, uh, like the back of a jean jacket. You'll want to cut the edges irregular with your pinking shears or just irregular. But if you had a straight edge like this, it's going to show a lot more than if you had an irregular edge. So from the, the front side, if it's a solid line, it's gonna show a solid line. Your eye's gonna go to that. But if it's irregular like this, then your eye's not gonna go to it. And I'm a little bit brave today because I'm wearing a shirt that um, I embroidered on 
and it's probably a little bit denser of an embroidery design than um than what i use stabilizer for so i probably should have um used a fusible and then a uh, tear away floated underneath just to support this amount of stitches because i do have a, just a few little uh wrinkles around there I'm looking, but I don't see them. And everybody, I think you have a hundred comments saying, I love your shirt, I love your shirt, I love your shirt. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, you're most critical of your own work, right? <laughs> exactly. So, um, let's see, uh, um, oh, also in the machine is a basting icon button. And so, if you want to keep your fabric and your stabilizer together, that also helps. The only reason that you wouldn't want to use that maybe is that it would put holes into your project that possibly you wouldn't want holes in that pro in that project, possibly. But if it's just a cotton fabric and the holes don't matter, I would use a basting stitch and that helps to keep it together. That's a great uh, idea. Also, that uh, ruler that she had, I saw Joanne leaving comments about the one that brother has. So if you wanted to see that link, I think she left a comment on there. Uh, is there a specific name for that one, Jane? Um, centering ruler, I think, but it is a brother product. So Maybe check with your brother dealers and I'm sure that they have it. Perfect. Yeah, it's really helpful. Yeah, other thing, um, I would pre-wash your, um, your shirt or uh, um, your fabric, whatever, before you stitch it out, if you can. Sometimes if you're given it as a gift, you don't necessarily want to wash it, but um, if you can, go ahead and wash it. And then that helps with the shrinkage, right? So when they have it and then they uh, wash it, it's, you know, it'll still look nice. Um, also, um, one time I was wanting to uh, stitch out a design on a t-shirt. Well, I don't keep t-shirt stretchy knits around too much. So then I went into my closet and I found an old t-shirt. And then I had an, you know, a, the same type of fabric that I wanted to stitch out on. So test out your, um, your design on the same fabric if, if possible. That, that's helpful. Test it out first. So I think that is a lot of of what I wanted to to talk about, and yeah, that great job, Jane, and also uh, that quilt behind you. It's almost Valentine's Day. Too. Yep. There you go. Yeah, I tried to bring in some pink, some red. You know, it's Valentine's Day almost. Exactly. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right. Let's make sure I get rid of that. Echo. Here you go. Hey, Sarah, why don't you uh, go next? Because you are, you said you're a beginner embroiderer, but I have to say, I've seen your work. If you're a beginner, you uh, <laughs> caught on really fast. <laughs> yes, she has. <laughs> so yeah. what tips do you have for us? Yeah, I only started embroidering two years ago, so I'm, I'm new to it. We'll say that at least. Um, one of the big things that kind of stopped me from starting embroidery and learning how to do it was not understanding what bobbin to use. And it seems like such a basic thing to all of us who have been embroidering a lot now, but I'm here for like the people who are scared to start embroidery and who have like these basic questions that they can't answer. Um, when you sew, you always match your bobbin thread with your top thread. And that's, kind of how it goes. But when you embroider, you actually use a different bobbin thread that kind of stays put for your whole design. So you're changing your top threads throughout the stitch out of your design, but the bobbin thread stays the same. So that was like, I don't know why, but I had such a hard time like figuring that out when I was first starting. I thought I had to change the bobbin thread every single time. <laughs> um, so your machine will come with an embroidery bobbin thread if you have an embroidery machine. And a really good rule of thumb is to stick with that weight of embroidery bobbin thread when you embroider, because your machine is kind of, the tensions and everything are set perfectly for that weight of embroidery thread. 
and it varies per machine. So for my Luminaire, for example, it came with this 60 weight thread, and that's what I continue to use for all of my embroidery bobbin thread now. Um, and I had to learn that the hard way. I tried to use a different embroidery bobbin thread and things went crazy. <laughs> I was seeing <laughs> the bobbin thread on the front of my designs and I was like, ah, oh, my machine is broken. And I took it into a dealer to have them look at it and they were like, you're using the wrong bobbin thread. And <laughs> that was it. And it, it was all fixed. So, um, so Sarah, really I just have to say that is such an easy thing that we don't even think of. Like yeah. you don't think of it. And I want to know from everybody watching, how, have you ever had that happen? Or is that just the light bulb that went off of why your embroidery is not turning out so well? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Learn that the hard way for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So good rule of thumb is to kind of take note of what weight embroidery bobbin thread comes with your machine and stick to it. Um, I also did a little bit of research to kind of see, like, let's say you throughout that spool that you first had and you kind of forgot, there are a few ways that you can kind of figure out which one you should use with your machine. Um, so I have here, this is like the included accessories list that came with my Luminaire. And you could see we have embroidery bobbin thread here and it tells you the part number. So you can look up the part number online and it, it pops up with 60 weight and then you could go from there and buy the right um, bobbin thread. His brother also makes pre-wound bobbins, which I think a lot of us are familiar with. These are kind of a lifesaver when your bobbin runs out in the middle of a design and you want to switch it out quickly. These are all loaded for you. Um, they're pre-wounds and yeah, they're great. So they come in black and white. And that's another thing that I wanted to talk about. So like I said, you don't have to change the bobbin thread every time you change the top <laughs> color thread. You just kind of pick either black or white for your design. And it's pretty easy to determine which one you should be using based on your design and the fabric that you're stitching out on. So I have two examples here. Um, this is a cute little pearl. So you can see I use light color stitches and it's on a light fabric. So this was an easy decision to use a white bobbin thread underneath. And that way, like your bobbin should not be showing through on the top, but it uh, it kind of, you know, you see it on the back of the design, I'll show you guys. You can see the white bobbin thread there. So if I had used black here, it would definitely show through a bit. It would look darker on this light color fabric. So you use a white there. And then I have this design here. And again, this was another easy choice. I use kind of darker threaders and this is a black fabric. So I use a black embroidery bobbin thread there. It's my little pigeon. <laughs> That's cute, by the way. <laughs> oh, very cute. <laughs> yeah, so that's a big one is um, the bobbin thread. And kind of once I figured that out for myself, I was off and running with, uh, <laughs> with all the embroidery. So I assume that there's other people out there that have that question and haven't really been able to answer it. So I wanted to speak to that. Well, and um, then just a quick question on your pre-round bobbins, um, mm -hmm. because some people, even myself, when I first started using pre-round bobbins, uh, there's so many different sizes. So yeah. Do you have any tips of making sure they find the right one? Should they just check their manual? Yes, definitely check your manual. That's another thing that I looked up. I have my quick reference guide here for the Luminaire. Um, it's also loaded onto your Luminaire. Um, a lot of the machines now come with the manuals on there. So just find your manual. And then here is like one of the first sections. It's about winding the bobbin. And it tells you right here, it says 11.5. And that is the size of the bobbin that you want to use. Yeah, that's really important because they do come in different sizes. In fact, I bought the wrong size at first. And I was like, this doesn't even fit my machine. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. And Cindy said, if you cannot find your manual, go to brother support.brother.com and they have all the manuals in there, no matter what machine. So this doesn't have to be a luminaire. It could be any embroidered machine from Brother. So yes, absolutely. You can go on there and just look up your machine name and you can find all the manuals and everything you need there. So yeah, awesome. those are yeah, those are two really important things just to know starting out with embroidery. Um, and once you know those and you're comfortable with your machine, you won't have any 
problems in that area. So good place to start. Um, the other thing I just wanted to talk about was the embroidery thread. So these are both brother threads that I have and all the ones behind me, they're all my brother threads. And I have them separated by cotton and poly. And it's really important to use polyester thread when you embroider because your machine can go really fast. Like this one goes up to 1,050 stitches per minute. And the poly thread is a lot stronger than the cotton thread. The cotton thread is breakable. Um, this is another thing I learned the hard way. If you put a cotton thread in and you start an embroidery, it will break, it will get tangled. It can't really handle the speed of the stitches. Um, so you definitely want to use a polyester thread. These also have a much nicer shine to them. So the finished product looks a bit nicer. And um, these are both leaf green. And I just wanted to pull those out. So this is the poly leaf green. You can see it's a much brighter color. And this is the cotton leaf green. And it's more dull, more pastel. So that's an easy way to determine. Um, but you can also just look right on the bottom of the spool. And you can see right there it says 100% cotton. And this one says 100% poly. And again, for embroidery, you definitely need to use poly thread. So I have a just quick question because I know a lot of people say threads. We got rayon, we got poly, we've got metallic, we've got everything. Jerry, you're like a metallic guru up there. <laughs> um, and, you know, I have to say the cotton thing is true, but you know, some of the otter threads, and I don't know what all of you think about this, but when I tried to embroider on denim jeans and things like that, I wanted to use, I didn't want to use the shiny and I chose maybe a cotton or something like that. And I slowed my machine down. Right. I slowed the speed down and it worked out fine but when it was fast it was not a good deal and so i think that that's something to keep in mind too because as you as you switch and get a little bit more advanced and you start moving around and you try different things i try crazy things like things that probably i should never <laughs> try but i don't i don't ever share it unless it's a success <laughs> well, um, with with cotton threads because a cotton fiber uh usually the longest cotton fiber is about eight inches long so when they spin it together, whereas polyester is just one long fiber, so it's going to be stuck together. So when they spin the cotton together, it, the thread works in that needle about 40, 50 times before it lays in a stitch. So it's hitting that needle so many times, so that eight inches is going to sort of rub against there, and that's what's going to break. So if you slow it down, it may that, that helps a lot. But... I love that description because I had no clue about those uh, dimensions, actually. <laughs> if <laughs> I can, if I, such a fabulous panel. <laughs> if I could throw something in here, too. Um, yes, you can embroider with rayon, but again, rayon is a natural product. Um, I did a whole cloth quilt where I was doing red work on a white quilt. When I washed it, I had a pink quilt. So you want to, again, this goes back to Jane. I feel like we're in the Brady Bunch. This goes back to, <laughs> to Jane's point about testing. Do a yeah. test first and then wash it if you're going to use rayon. Because some of especially like the reds and the dark blues, they can bleed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like Jerry, whoops, this way. <laughs> Jerry <laughs> said the rayon threads is a, <laughs> rayon's a very, very weak fiber. Uh, if it gets wet, it's just going to pop. Uh, but it just, she's seen how the cotton broke. Well, rayon's going to break a lot quicker. Um, so that's, uh, it's, it's pretty, it's really shiny, shiny, but, um, and that's all we had for quite a while as far as the shine goes. Uh, so you really do have to slow things down if you're going to use a rayon and it is not color fast for sure. <laughs> well, well good, and, good takeaway yeah. for beginners is to start with the poly and then exactly. Exactly. That. <laughs> but, well, and, you know, Sarah, what if you talking about the bobbin and talking about the thread choices, I I can think of the first time I started and everyone saying, did you try this, this, this? I'm like, oh my gosh, like just give me something <laughs> to start with. It gets so exactly. overwhelming. And yeah. I love the idea of doing poly first. And the other thing is I would have never thought about rayon being not color safe. And also I've heard of people that have embroidered with rayon where the fat with where it actually started to fade a little bit. It was something that mm -hmm. was in the sun all the time. So yeah. these are, we could have a whole show on thread, but I love the idea of just grabbing that poly first because yeah. why not start with success, right? Yeah. Well, one thing I do want to say about poly though, is that it is very, very, very strong. So uh, embroidering, sewing, whatever, is like driving a car, check your rear view mirror. 
if that thread is not flowing, it's strong enough to bend your needle and have your needle hit that foot and break. Yeah. Uh, other, other threads will break before they break your needle, but polyester is just gonna keep on going and it will bend your needle and break. So make sure that that thread is flowing. Definitely. Yeah. One thing that um, I want to add to all of this too is that there was a question that someone was asking about changing their um, bobbin, um, the thickness of the bobbin. You don't want to change the weight of your bobbin at all, but you can change your top thread. Like um, depending on the project that you're going to be stitching, um, I stitched down on a handkerchief once before. So it's um, lightweight linen handkerchief. And so I starched it and then um, placed it in the hoop. I used 100, uh, 100 weight silk thread in the top, but the bobbin thread, depending on if you have an embroidery only machine or if you have a combination embroidery sewing machine is gonna be the big difference between what you're gonna wanna use for your um, bobbin thread. But the and the needle size, of course, can change depending on the weight of your upper thread. Yeah. So again, and just stick with whichever weight comes with your machine. So sixty weight, um, ninety weight is another another one that's pretty common. Um, whichever spool comes with your machine, just stick with it. Keep using that because your machine has been set to take that type of thread. And it will get mad at you if you try to. <laughs> hey, speaking of mad, how's Hercules? I don't hear him. Oh my goodness, he's he's out in prison. He's out, he's outside the door. Yeah, I don't want him <laughs> snoring or anything. Um, just to add that, just to add to that too, I I don't want anyone to think that that you only can use a sixty or ninety weight. Um, when you're doing freestanding lace, that's a whole different ball game. You do want to match the top the bobbin thread with the top thread because you're going to see it from both sides. So don't think you just have to use one type of bobbin. That's a that's, that's a true. case where you and but then to take on what Sarah said too, I was working quickly one day in my in my sewing room. And I was doing some freestanding lace and I switched over to do some regular embroidery and I forgot to change my bobbin out and things just got ugly really fast. <laughs> and so she's right. You know, it, it things will go haywire pretty quickly if you don't check your bobbin. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, Sarah, did you have anything else that you want to share right now? Or should we move on to um, Kathy or you guys want to switch back and forth? Um, I mean, I just kind of had one other tip, just continuing to give people who are nervous about starting like a few good starting points. Um, the last thing that I would say, and we've touched a little bit um, on fabric, is to start using, start embroidery with woven fabrics because they're much easier to hoop. Um, they behave a lot more nicely <laughs> than stretch fabrics. Uh, once you get into the stretch and the knit, you have to use a few different types of stabilizer. You have to starch them. like. There's a lot more nuance to them. So again, I'm, I just wanted to speak to the people who are kind of scared to start out or thinking about starting out. Um, and that's just another one of my tips is to use a woven or a fabric that has no stretch when you start um, experimenting with embroidery. I love that, Sarah. I love that. And you know, by the way, that is very true <laughs> because <laughs> the knits and you get into like even like the lace, it's a whole different ball game. So start with something simple, really simple. Even uh, somebody was asking me the other day about putting a monogram. Is that simple? I said it is, but it can be intimidating because you don't want to ruin your garment or what you're putting it on. So put it on a patch. <laughs> What's that yeah. on? A woven <laughs> and you're golden. If you screw it up, toss it out and get another one. <laughs> and you know, I'm the queen of patches. I love making patches. <laughs> <laughs> and is it true? If you screw it up, throw it out. <laughs> totally. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Hey, Kathy, you yes. have some things that you want to share with us on a different level. And you're talking about a specific embroidery design. And this will be very interesting to people because there's a lot of, depending on what machine you have, sometimes you can combine a bunch of stitches, sometimes you can't. But uh, why don't you give us your little tips for this? Well, what I wanted to show is designs because not all designs are created equal. So when you start embroidering, uh, you may get a design and you think it's all your fault that the outlines are off and everything's not working right. You're gonna slap more and more stabilizer on there. You're gonna be sewing half inch thick and it's not still not gonna work. Uh, so not all designs are created equal. 
So what I think beginners might want to do is start with the designs in their machine because the designs in your machine are going to be digitized to where they're going to work because the, the machine manufacturer doesn't want you to think <laughs> that, that you got a problem with the machine. So they're good. They, they hired people to do a great job of digitizing. So there's going to be so, uh, most of the designs in your machines are, well, all the designs in your machine are just going to be good to sew out. So if you start with those and you watch how they'll sew, you'll get an idea of how digitizing kind of works and what, uh, what happens. Now they're not all done by the same digitizer, so they'll all be a little bit different. So you can just watch how different things are done. So um, I'm going to go to my camera over here and uh, we're gonna do a show a Disney design. Sounds good. And I see some of you rolling in with questions. Don't worry, we'll get to those here shortly. Um, see a few of them. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go to our Disney section. And this is, uh, this is what I'm going to show you is these seven little guys, the seven dwarfs. Now, when you look at this, you're going to say, oh, well, that's cute. It shouldn't have been uh, taken too long. Well, uh, the person who digitized this was very, very careful, and there's 47 different color changes. Not 47 colors, but you have to change the thread 47 times. So that was uh, quite a bit, but anyway. I'll come here to Disney, and I'm gonna go to the movie section, which is 05, and then scroll to design 30. And there they are. So they come in, the design is one and a half by 6.92, and they've got it in there horizontally. So when I go to set, you're gonna see up here that they want me to put it in the nine and a half by nine and a half or the large 16 by 10 and 5 eighths. Well, I'm gonna have a lot here and a lot here, just like Jane showed you, and that just causes too much fabric and, and some movement. So the first thing I wanna do is come to edit and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees and watch up here. And it shows that I can now use my five by seven. So I'm gonna say, okay. So now I wanna see exactly how this is going to sew out. So if your machine doesn't have the stitch simulator, uh, and you have a software package, you can usually watch how it sews off in a software package. So I'm gonna to come to my simulator, I'm gonna make this larger, and I'm gonna to come to my simulator here, and I'm gonna push start, and you're gonna see how it's going to sew out. So the first thing it's gonna do is, is sew out the first three, and then it will sew out two more, and then two more at the end, for a total of seven dwarfs, <laughs> anyway. Uh, and But as you can see, it's just doing a few things at a time. And because of that, it's not gonna do all the pick axes at once. And if you look, you're gonna see a little bit of brown here. If, if it had done all of them at one time, that would have been thrown off and you would the design would not line up the way it should. So it, the design lined up really well. So that's why sometimes, I'm gonna go ahead and um, go faster now, and there you go. And sometimes that's the way things are, things are digitized that way to keep the registration where it should be. They don't do it just to irritate us, but they do it for a reason. So when we come to embroidery here, you're gonna see this line here. Do you see all the different colors? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a, <laughs> A lot you of colors. Get a really good cup of coffee, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, and it says uh, 47 color changes. So, and it says 24 minutes. Well, that's 24 minutes of sewing time. It's not 24 minutes of changing your thread. So it took quite a bit of quite a bit more time. But if you sew these out and you watch your simulator and see how the different ones sew out you'll get an idea of what is digitized well and what isn't digitized well. And so when you go to buy a design and you watch it, uh, the stitch simulator and you can see that you have three piles of stitches. So you'll have 
uh, the white of the eye, the, the black of the eye, and maybe some color in the eye, and they're all piled on top of each other, you know it's going to be um, time, your needle's gonna go thunka, 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 and it's not gonna be pretty. Uh, so what you may wanna do is take it to your software and dig out a hole, so underneath you'll only have, you'll have the white, you'll have a hole in the base color, then your white, and a little hole in that for the blue and a little hole for the black. So you're not sewing through several different layers. So I think it's kind of important to watch your sew out. So you'll get a feel of how these uh, design stitches out. Does it make sense? It makes sense. And I just have a question for the panel. Uh, do you, um, when you get a new design, do you test it before you put it on something? I mean, like before you put on really a nice garment or fabric or do you test? I always do. It goes back to what Kathy said. You don't know how something is digitized until you stitch it out. Um, it may be great. It may be not so great. And you, if anyone has ever tried to remove embroidery stitches, oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you have to break out the razor blades and you got to break out the, yeah, it's, it's a nightmare. So I always test something out, especially with the designer I've never stitched out before. Mm -hmm. I agree. Sarah, how about you? Um, yeah, I, I make most of my own designs, if I'm being honest, but um, sometimes when I buy them, I definitely like to test them out because, I mean, you can get them for so cheap, like Jerry was saying, there's all these websites with free ones and packs that are on sale, and you kind of get a little skeptical, like, how good is this going to be if it was $2? <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. I mean, that's a great point. You know, it may be just a design that didn't stitch out well, but they're like, hey, here it is for free. <laughs> right. Yeah. Most of the time they're great, but sometimes they're not. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't know what software the digitizer is using, um, how they're pathing it. Uh, pathing is a digitizing thing. So you, you look at your design, you look at your artwork, and you decide what you're going to do first and go second and third. And so it's like, cleaning, you know, you, I'm going to clean this first and this second, I'm going to start at the top and go to the bottom. So that uh, if I went from the bottom to the top, my bottom is going to get dirty again. <laughs> so you have to look at how it looks and, and path it and sew it out. And you don't know how those digitizers do that. And sometimes they do fantastic and sometimes not so much. So would you say then for a beginner embroiderer, uh, somebody, because I saw Patty say, oh, I'm getting nervous now. So don't be <laughs> Use the bobbin that came, the bobbin thread that came with your machine. That's number one. I saw a lot of people asking, what is it called? It's just bobbin thread, but it's a different weight for different machines. So just check that and you can check the manual. But I would recommend, and I don't know about you, but I would use a machine built, a uh, design built into the machine to start just yes. because you know that it's going to be, it's, it's going to work out unless you have other factors not in place. Exactly. We want you happy and we want you to continue using it. If you happen to get something that you really love and it's not quite right, you're going to blame yourself. And the designs in the machine are going to make help you make be successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And, and then you'll get a feel for how they're sewing out. And that's something that I never did. I just sewed them out. I never watched how they were sewn out. But if you just sort of watch how they go from one area to the next and you watch different ones, you'll say, oh, I really like how that one worked. And um you'll get a better feel for what's what's good and what isn't. I would I also say that if you're, if you're really struggling and you want more than what came with your machine, that a good place to go would be iBroidery.com. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah. For beginners? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I'll bring that up on the screen too in case some of you are new well, to I, the other. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't want you to spend, you know, weeks on this just you know just sew some of them out so you'll get a feel but go ahead and do watch how it sews because i didn't i just you know you'd get up and you'd leave but <laughs> but if you'll see how it, it the, they have the needle walk from one area to the next it really does make sense mm -hmm. and uh, of course you're not going to know that when you buy a design but when you stitch it out if it just hops all over and you have a whole lot of jump stitches um you'll know that something may not quite be right and you can pick somebody else to buy from. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Everybody's saying, I always test. I always test. Now, <laughs> Sharon said, I, I have to say <laughs> that I don't always test. I'm pretty bad. I have had some things tossed, but I, <laughs> but I don't always test. Oh, definitely. Yes. <laughs> we want to split the racer, Josie says. Uh, Josie, I love that. Somebody invent, Jerry, you invent that, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm in. <laughs> okay. So now I want to talk uh, about setting the hoop. So I'm going to have to move my camera. So if you take me off here. Sure. We'll remove her just for a second until we bring her back. Oh, Jerry, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so the comments and questions coming in are fantastic. Uh, some people are just saying, I don't test. I don't test. I just do it. Well, you know, I would just love to know, and I, this is always kind of fun. What is the worst mistake you ever made? embroidering <laughs> that you can I share. Plead, I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the mistakes I made was, uh, well, I don't know if I made it, but it just, I think it was the gremlins that got into my sewing room. And I was, I was embroidering on a completely flat piece of fabric. There was nothing in the way. I don't know what happened. I came back to get some, after I got some coffee and the fabric had completely wound itself around the foot and oh. it just looked awful. <laughs> and, but here's a tip that I learned out of it. Uh, what most of us will start doing is we'll start hacking away with the scissors and get mad and we'll start over again. We'll get frustrated. My tip is to don't do that first. First thing you could do, if you can, remove the embroidery foot from the machine, then oh. slide the hoop out and then look at what you got. It may be that you only have to clip a couple threads and you're okay. But if you start hacking away at a scissors while the, the, it, the foot is still attached to the machine, it, it, you might not have had to do that. So. <laughs> Sarah, can you top that? <laughs> that has happened to me before, and it actually bent my foot completely, and I couldn't use Ooh. it anymore. So, Ooh. yeah, it was nasty. Um, a more recent failure, I was stitching a knit uh long sleeve top and I still haven't mastered embroidering on knits and I didn't use the right stabilizer. I probably didn't hoop it correctly and it got sucked down into the machine. And then I tried to take oh. the stitches out and I ripped a hole right in the knit. So <laughs> it was a, it's a garbage project now. <laughs> another, another patch opportunity. <laughs> So you're, you're, you cracked me up with those knits. Uh, I remember getting a fishing shirt that I paid for, by the way, I didn't do it myself. And it was one of those, um, well, what do we call them? Like the wife feeder, you know, the uh, shirts that like are this big and you put them on, they can stretch this big. And so the shirt's like this big, although it can stretch this far and they put a patch like right here that said World Sailfish Tournament. So you put it on and the whole shirt stretches that far, except for this right here. I'm like, who did that? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, placement is key, right? <laughs> What's your worst, Poopa? Um, I would have to say um, the same thing happened to me as Jerry and Sarah is, um, you know, you just look away for that one second and somehow the fabric just got caught into the foot. Luckily, um, I don't leave my uh, sewing machine running while I, I pretty much stay right there to my, with my machine after that. And uh, yeah, because <laughs> it, it, I agree with Jerry as well. Take the foot off first and then slide it out and then clip away. I think it's easier too to get to those stitches that you need to um, rip out. <laughs> I, I agree. So I, I have, I've had that happen too, but I think my worst one that I can recall, <laughs> there's quite a few, I could, we could have a whole book probably between the five of us. Um, I was almost finished embroidering a gown, a beautiful gown, and it had a ton of embroidery and I'm on my last little section and just think of a big, long skirt, big, wide skirt. And I know you're going to know what happened here. The skirt, when I went to rehoop, got tucked under and above and I wasn't you always check under your hoop and I was in a hurry and I'm almost finished and I start to embroider and I go to take it out and I embroidered the front to the back <laughs> I made it work I made it work I, I pulled it out itsy bitsy stitches I was sweating probably crying and uh, all those things all of the above but I ended up doing embroidery over the part I messed up so 
it was saved, but it was so close to ruining a beautiful garment that had taken like hundreds of hours to make. So that was my, my well, I've done that one too, but not on a beautiful gown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kathy, we have you back. We're going to make you okay. tell your papa when you're finished here too. We're not letting you out of the box here. <laughs> oh, well, there's too many to mention, I tell you. Okay, <laughs> so setting your hoop makes it easier to hoop sometimes. Uh, so what you're going to do to set your hoop is you're going to take your fabric and your stabilizer that you're going to sew and you're going to fold it in half and put it between your fingers. And you see that size that I have between my fingers? Mm -hmm. That's what I want my hoop to be set at. So I'm going to take my hoop and I'm going to unscrew this and hold it here until I can see that gap right here. Mm. Oh, am I showing it? So right here, do you see that gap? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's about the size of the double fold. And you want double fold because you need half here and half up here. So you're going to look at your hoop, and you, your inner hoop has an arrow, and your outer hoop has an arrow. So that's at the top. So I'm going to take the hoop underneath and slide it under. And then I'll take my top hoop and put my arrow here and here and just, whoops, I'm gonna have to move. So I'm gonna take my hands here and just walk them down and push it in and now I'm hooped and I've got a nice hooping there. And that wow. was so simple. And so you can tighten the screw up if you want, but if you're like doing um, edge to edge quilting and you do this, all you have to do is pop that out and go to the next one. So you don't have to keep setting your hoop. So that is setting your hoop. Wow, that was very easy to do. Yes, yeah. Great tutorial, Kathy, great. All right, so we're gonna wait for Kathy to come back to our screen and we'll ask her her fupa and then we'll let you all go. This has been an absolutely awesome show. <laughs> Uh, I'm watching all the comments. I'd love to hear everyone else's fupa. Then when I go back and read all the comments, <laughs> I can have a really good laugh. <laughs> so Kathy, your turn. What's okay, your word? Well, mine was on the multi-needle and I was doing one of those cute animals that you zip open and take the stuffing out. Oh, well, yeah. it got cut off, caught underneath and I sewed the zipper. I kept hearing the machine going, you took it there. I couldn't figure it out. And when I took it off, it was stuck to everything because <laughs> the, the zipper had got caught up underneath. So that was not pretty. Oh, that's not pretty. So see, why did I have everyone share this? Because all of you that love to embroider or you're like, I, I, I'm getting into this, I'm starting, just know, we've all been there, we've all done it. And even if you're over broke- and Over again. <laughs> We still, we still do. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> we still do. Everybody's saying thank it, you, thank you. It never this, ends. This has been such a great show. Everyone's saying, I got to watch this again. Hi, Dalia. And I, I know there were some questions through here that I missed, so I apologize for that. But this has been a huge full hour. You can still ask your questions because the brother social team will reach out to us and answer. But uh, I just, I'm so excited. I think, I don't know which one was my best tip, not my best, my favorite tip today. I don't know. I think though, Sarah, what you mentioned for the beginner is hands down, because I can't tell you how many through the years, uh, you know, I've bought machines and I just take everything out, throw it to the side, pay no attention. <laughs> uh, but I did see there was one very common question that nobody, that we did not answer and we're, we won't make it a big conversation, but Someone said, does it matter if you use an embroidery uh, needle or can you just use a universal size 12 needle? Uh, do you, does anyone have a preference? I use both. It's whatever's handy. <laughs> uh, I use, uh, I usually try to use the embroidery, but if not, I'll use a universal. Okay. I've I only use, ever uh, used the universal. I use embroidery because technically the shaft is stronger. Uh, mm -hmm. because it has to pierce through the fabric numerous times. Jane? Yes, I, I agree. I just use the, mostly I use the needles that uh, come with the machine. But um, if I'm using, I've used metallic needles when I've been sewing with uh, metallic thread. So it kind of depends on the thread too. Yeah. yeah. 
we could have a whole show on needles actually yeah. but in exactly. general I'm with all of you, but I sometimes will find that I will choose a needle to go that matches the fabric if I'm using a knit and things like that. But in general, if you've got a regular embroidery needle, probably size 75, 11 is usually a good right, safe standard. Exactly, yeah. And you probably have one in your machine. It came in a little <laughs> package that you probably didn't even pay attention to. <laughs> but change it often. <laughs> Yes, change it often. So by the way, I see everyone saying, yes, you can go back and watch this show again. If you're on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to Brother Channel because our shows for the next few months are going to, the times might be changing a little bit. Everybody's traveling again and we're going to work around people's schedules. So if you subscribe on YouTube, you'll always be notified of the live show. If you're on Facebook, share this to your page and go back and watch it. And also be sure to follow Brother Sewing and Crafting on both sides. So everyone... This has been amazing. It's so nice to see you all. Do we have to do like, are we doing the, hey, Jerry. <laughs> poke, poke, poke. <laughs> thank you again. And thank you all for watching. And if you like these shows, be sure to tell brother you love them and give us topics that you'd love us to cover because we love to see your sewing and crafting. There's the hashtags up above. There's the website down below. Brother, thank you for having us and let us take over your page. So guys. It's so Thanks. nice to see you. Thank Thanks. you, everybody. Bye -bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.